the Giza or Giza empath. I know in the States you say Giza. In Britain we tend to say Giza. So I'm going to proceed by using the British pronunciation because after all, I am British. As you know from my work, I divide those that are empaths into various schools, but also cadres. And the Giza empath is one of the cadres. The Giza empath is an individual who naturally is empathic in nature with the additional tendency to fountain with emotion. All empaths are emotional creatures, it goes with the territory, but some empaths are far more emotional than others. Some empaths, such as the carrier, are more stoic and are not prone to repeated outbursts of emotion. They exhibit that emotion, they're not carved out of stone, but they tend to forge a path with is steady with the issue of their emotions. Whereas with the Giza, there is a great more in terms of the amount of emotion that is demonstrated. The Giza empath is also marked by high energy levels. One might even go so far as to say that there are shades of hyperactivity appearing with the Giza empath. He or she is always on the go, heading here, travelling there, seeking out people to see how they are, and to exhibit their significant caring side with plenty of suitable expressions of concern, empathy and understanding. Whilst they will engage in the practical, they're far more demonstrative in terms of the cooing and clucking around an individual who needs to be looked after. This, of course, is not just the lip service that a narcissist would pay to an individual by supposedly exhibiting concern. On the contrary, with the Giza empath, their exhortations of are you okay? How are you? That must really hurt. Oh, goodness me, you don't look so good. Or, gosh, you've made a big improvement there. You're looking very rosy today. You look golden, etc. Is heartfelt and genuine. It is part of the manifestation of their emotional empathy. And that concern naturally has a buoyant effect upon the listener, but also provides plenty of fuel to the narcissist where the listener is one. The manifestation of the Giza aspect can either be insignificant, significant, strong, very strong, or majority. In essence, with the Giza empath, the Giza wears their heart on their sleeve, and where majority, they regularly fountain with emotion. They are very expressive. With those that have the minority elements, insignificant, significant, strong or very strong, they have a number of particular emotions which are heightened. So, for instance, if it is upset, rather than just be upset, they are distraught. If it's happiness, rather than it being solely happiness, they experience ecstasy. There is an amplification of particular emotions, and dependent on the strength of the Giza element, the more emotions are affected. The Giza empath is very useful for our kind because of how expressive they are with regard to their emotions. Their responses are exaggerated, but not in the falsifying way of the narcissist. It doesn't mean that they are false, far from it. The exaggeration manifests as a heightened response, which is both useful for us in terms of the receipt of fuel, and then from learning from the Giza empath by way of mimicry and replication. There is no subtlety when it comes to the Giza empath. When the Giza empath is happy, it is shown as a torrent of joy. Their concerns are grave and focused, and their hurt is not that of the silent tear, but the wail and tears of the tortured. Some displays may actually seem melodramatic to some, but they are not. 
They are exactly how the Giza empath is feeling. The Giza empath, owing to their high energy levels, talks often about how he or she feels. But this is not a case of them explaining that because it must all be about them. But rather they do so conveying these feelings in order to help others by ensuring they better understand them. When someone talks about being in despair, the Giza empath will relate how they know despair only too well and will articulate that feeling in order to demonstrate that they understand how the listener feels. This is a combination of how their emotional empathy works with this particular cadre. The Giza empath has a tissue-thin skin and is highly sensitive. They are very easily hurt, and when the narcissist lashes out against them, they will respond with a fountain of emotion. If they are praised, their thanks will gush from them with greater intensity than a Gwyneth Paltrow Oscar acceptance speech. If they are denigrated, the tears will not just flow, but they will cascade along with that trembling bottom lip and a near histrionic response to the pain caused by the wounding words of the narcissist. The Giza empath is simply unable to put on a brave face. Whilst the carrier empath is dogged and stoic in the face of adversity, ensuring that they have that slightly inscrutable expression as they forge a path through the difficulties, as they focus their empathy on resolving the situation in a practical fashion, the Giza empath will dissolve in a bubbling mess of tears. They are completely unable to conceal their emotions, even for a short time. A carrier empath can do so because they shift their feelings onto solving a problem. The geezer empath does not have that function. They are masters of tea and sympathy, kind and comforting words flowing, but of little use practically. Unlike the magnet empath, the geezer empath is better at dealing with intimate, and one-on-one -on -one situations rather than handling a crowd. The Giza empath loves nothing more than finding an individual as their project and wanting to use their biggest asset in order to resolve their issues, their utter devotion, for example, to love. Giza empaths are invariably the greatest love devotees of all of the empath groupings. They truly believe that with love, everything can be solved. Love conquers everything. All you need is love. Love will save the day. If you were to ask them just how this happens, they could not answer, but explain that love works in a mysterious way, and by being loving, showing love, and acting with love in each and everything that they do, this will then resolve the problems, heal hurt, and bring happiness. They love to demonstrate their love. This devotion to love means that the Giza empath is big on romance and, through emotional thinking, invariably readily falls prey to overt exhibitions of passion, love and romance from a narcissist. Any narcissist which presents as the knight in shining armour will have the Giza empath's attention from the beginning as he or she believes they have found a kindred spirit. The Giza Empath's overt displays of emotion make our task of mirroring so much easier. By wearing his or her heart on their sleeve, they suffer repeated heartbreak. Nevertheless, notwithstanding this outcome, the Giza Empath is undeterred. They will suffer misery and pain from this broken heart, but they will then affirm their belief in love and bounce back. No matter how devastated they are following the shattering of their heart, they will piece it back together, and will do so generally with greater speed amongst the empathic types. They may suffer considerable pain, and they will exhibit the effect more greatly than the other empathic types, but they also recharge with a greater speed as a consequence of their devotion to love. Their belief is unshakable. No matter how many times they are let down, hurt, cheated on, and so forth, they will soon bounce back. They are not entirely naive, but rather have an undimmed and undented belief in the power of love. This capacity for returning to the arena of love so promptly after heartache 
means that they are ideal candidates for post-disengagement and post-escape hoovers as they refuel so quickly. The Giza empath is highly sensitive, and where you combine a contagion with Giza, you have somebody that not only fountains with emotion, but feels the emotion of others to an extent that they can be readily and quickly overwhelmed. This overwhelming of a contagion geezer could, to the extent of causing that individual to be almost paralysed by the emotion that they're being flooded with. They will often be moved to tears, be they tears of joy or tears of pain. There will often be a need for a tissue when this person is around. One might be moved to consider them as someone pathetic, but that would be an inappropriate label. Yes, the Giza empath is very easy to manipulate into spurting out fuel, and because of their beliefs, they will suffer repeated hurts. But their strength lies in their unwavering belief in love, and how they soon bounce back following their setbacks. They will do Misery 2.0 when they are hurt. The sobbing, the wailing, and the tears will be extensive. But it will not last they do not wallow, but wipe away the tears, reapply the mascara, smooth down the rumpled clothes, and climb right back onto their unicorn of love and hope, and gallop into the fray once again. The Giza empath can also exhibit unpredictability of response, which in some instances can appeal with a sliver to the greater, because that presents more of a challenge. There will always be emotion, which very much suits the narcissist, but the extent and intensity of it may at times be so startling that it actually affects the standing of the narcissist with third parties who look on and witness what appears to be melodrama. Exerting control over this emotional output can at times prove difficult for all save the greater narcissist, but that won't stop the lesser and mid-range narcissist still being attracted to it especially the lesser narcissists. The lesser is very much drawn to Giza empaths because it's so much easier to get fuel out of them. And in general terms, the lessers are lazier, and therefore it suits them to be able to give a simple prod to the Giza empath who will immediately flow with plenty of delicious fuel. The Giza empath lacks the serenity of the magnet empath, and doesn't have the cool deliberation of the carrier. The Giza will erupt with emotion, with squeals of delight at the good news of a friend who is to be a parent, the triumphant praise for a colleague who has secured a promotion, and the devastated collapse following the death of a loved one. The Giza empath believes that everyone has the capacity to love, and that once they do, all their ills will be solved. This invariably means that where you have a codependent Giza, both in terms of majority, they have a very difficult time with the narcissist because not only do they find themselves having to give and give and give in order to provide validation, their belief in love and as a love devotee means that they think that the provision of love will change the narcissist, that the narcissist just has to find the innate goodness that somehow resides within them and all will be well where you combine a codependent who is also martyr and geezer, you have an individual that essentially has strapped themselves to the narcissist and will undertake a, the roughest of rides and still attempt to cling on. The geezer empath appeals to all schools of narcissists because of the high fuel content. They are easy to seduce, but tend to suffer swifter devaluations than other empaths because they shine brighter at first and thus run the risk of our kind becoming familiar with their fuel in a quicker time so that the potency loses its lustre sooner, leading to devaluation and eventually disengagement. They are prime candidates for hoovers, and often the hoover bar is lower for them as a consequence of the narcissist intrinsically knowing that so much delicious fuel will become available with the added bonus of it being hoover fuel, and furthermore, given the devotion to love, means that the geezer empath has a greater susceptibility to giving the narcissist a second, third, or even fourth chance. The geezer empathic tendency is evident 
with all classes of empathic individual, but is often seen amongst the codependent class, where the tendency manifests in an extreme form. Its presence will exist in all empaths, but then tends to be mixed with other empathic tendencies, so the effect is more diluted, but certainly not muted. With the codependent, it's often the case that at least a sliver of Giza wool exist, and usually strong, very strong, or even majority. With regard to the super empath, it's unusual to see strong or very strong or majority Giza empathic tendencies because of the super empath's inherent resilience to both a sudden devaluation and being hoovered. The lesser is drawn to those with this tendency because the effort required is so minimal to prompt a response and thus accords with the lesser narcissist's lower energy levels and reduce cognitive function for manipulation and machinations. The mid-ranger has a degree of attraction also, again because of the fuel on offer and the ease that it can be harvested, but the emotional volatility that the geezer demonstrates can become wearing to the mid-ranger in terms of threats to the facade and the difficulties in asserting control to achieve some of the aims. The greater will revel in those with some geezer empathic tendencies, although it is not the prime thing that the narcissist will look for as a greater, but will be amused at the sudden eruptions and play straight into the narcissist's portrayal of the individual as unbalanced and unhinged. Where a greater couples with someone that exhibits geezer tendencies, that type of narcissist takes an unaware and perverse pleasure in provoking the geezer into giving more and more fuel, possibly to the point of collapse. If you would like to know whether you are of the Giza Kadra, undertake the empath detector test to find out first of all whether you're an empath and if so, what your school and Kadra is. You'll find details of that in the video description. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.